Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. As you know, I'm a doctor but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. Right, so today's video is an interesting one. It is, is tretinoin safe for skin of colour? Now, tretinoin co goes under a variety of different names. First of all, you just need to know it's, the, it's part of the vitamin A family. It's also known as all transretinoic acid or retin A. Now the bioavailability of tretinoin cream is slightly better than gel, but honestly for both the vast majority does just sit on the surface. If you're wondering if isotretinoin is related to tretinoin, the answer would be yes, it's just the oral version. So tretinoin is actually excellent for anti-aging. A study was done on 360 candidates using 0.025% tretinoin and after 24 weeks, they'd seen a significant reduction in their wrinkles. I think the mistake that people potentially could make here is thinking that more is better. So thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna use 0.1% tretinoin, uh, which is, you know, four times as potent. Um, but guess what? The side effects go up exponentially and actually the efficacy isn't much, there isn't much difference. So I would always say opt for 0.025% um, if you're thinking about anti-aging in skin of color. So the theory is that tretinoin will stimulate collagen production. And don't forget, we produce 1% less collagen every year from 21 years old onwards. So in theory, you might want to start, you know, in your early 20s. Um, I would probably recommend late 20s to early 30s um, if, you're, if you're starting to see wrinkles already. Often for skin of colour, we start to wrinkle from our early 30s. Uh, for Caucasian skin, it tends to be in your 20s. So for skin of colour I would wait a little bit because of the potential irritation that can happen. Um, I would also say it does take about six months to see any difference whatsoever. So if you're not going to be patient with it then you know avoid it completely. The other thing I would say with skin of colour is the application method. So I would for example I use tretinoin 0.02% and first I would apply my fatty moisturiser so I apply my Serapep then I apply the tretinoin and then I would follow up with Serapep so I'd use the sandwich method in order to minimise any chance of irritation uh, but also get the e efficacy that I want. Now, some people use tretinoin for hyperpigmentation. Um, the thing is, the data really isn't there to back it up as a great form of anti as a anti pigmentation ingredient. I would prefer that you used tyrosinase inhibitors uh, such as alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, licorice root extract, or even a combination of vitamin A's. So you know with your retinaldehyde plus your retinal palmitate. So for example, in the facial pigmentation kit for pigmentation for skin of color, we do need to use eight to 10 tyrosinase inhibitors combined in order to treat pigmentation. For us, pigmentation is stubborn. Those melanocytes are extremely difficult to calm down. And the problem with tretinoin is that it's a single active um, and can potentially cause further irritation. So it just would never be my first option for pigmentation for skin of color. If you want a whole pigmentation routine, you can follow my The Ordinary Layering for Pigmentation. It does give good results. Um, the other one I made for you was Paula's Choice um, Pigmentation Layering. Um, those are the cheapest things you can do. Start with that first. Only if after three to six months you're not seeing results, you might want to upgrade the, to our facial pigmentation kit. But ours is not first line. It really is after everything else has basically failed. Now, if you're using tretinoin for acne, I would opt for micronized tretinoin because it's less irritating. Don't forget that when you've got acne, you already have inflamed skin. That's what those red marks are. It's inflammation. Um, and even the black brown marks that happen is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So we want to do whatever we can to minimize inflammation with acne. I would also say with acne, don't use benzoyl peroxide plus tretinoin at the same time uh, for a number of reasons. One, they can both be quite irritating. Um, and number two, don't forget that tretinoin is an antioxidant, right? It's a vitamin A. But guess what? Benzoyl peroxide literally kills bacteria with oxygen. So it produces oxygen. So imagine one is mopping up 
um, become oxidized, it becomes very, becomes oxidized quickly. And then the other ingredient is producing oxygen. You don't want to put those two together because it's just going to be ineffective and can lead to unnecessary irritation. So if you are using both ingredients in your routine, I would do one in the morning and I do one at night, or I would leave a few hours gap in the evening. Um, the other thing I could, I would potentially do is just to use the benzoyl peroxide as a spot treatment just on the actual live acne to kill the bacteria, you know, in that lesion, um, but not have it touch the areas with tretinoin on it. The downside with tretinoin is 60% of people will experience dryness, flaking and sensitivity. Now that's a problem for our community, for the skin of colour community because for us any form of irritation can lead to more pigmentation and this is why I do recommend the sandwich method for application of tretinoin. Apply your fatty moisturizer first followed by your tretinoin followed by your fatty moisturizer. I also wouldn't wear your tretinoin every day. This is something that I would use maybe once or twice a week and if you're okay after a few weeks then you might titrate to maybe three nights a week but you know you just need to be aware that it's an aggressive cream um, and I don't want you to be in a situation where now not only is your, is your skin aging, but you've now damaged the skin barrier and the moisture barrier and your skin is drier than ever. So to reiterate, it is a nighttime product. The moisture that rises I recommend would be Cetraben, CeraVe, or hopefully from December, I will be giving you CeraPep. So this is what CeraPep looks like. It's a fatty moisturizer. Uh, with niacinamide and anti-inflammatories in it which works nicely with the tretinoin. So during the day I would say make sure you are religious with your SPF 50. I do prefer mineral sunscreen over chemical um, because it is anti-inflammatory so don't get tretinoin will sensitize your skin to UV. So here are the three that I do love right now. So sheer zinc I've been wearing this one for years. It does give you a white cast um, but you know if you're running and you don't care what you look like this is the one to purchase um, I really like live tinted um, so this is from Deepika Mutiala um, this is SPF 30 and it's good to wear under your makeup and of course in Zincable so this is my one and this is SPF 50 mineral sunscreen maximum UVA UVB protection plus Melishield in it which is your anti-pigmentation stem cells for skin of color I would say out of the three, these are the two that give no white cast. This one comes out tinted and this one comes out invisible. Now with tretinoin, you can also use the short contact method where you apply it um, for 30 minutes to 60 minutes and then wash it off if your skin is sensitive because then you're getting as much benefit as you possibly can but without the irritation. And that is always going to be key for skin of colour. Don't forget I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of colour down below. And follow me on Instagram which is Dr. Manita Rattan or Skincare by Dr. V or on TikTok which is Dr. Manita Rattan too. Any other videos you want me to make for you, please write them down below because you know I create my list and I just keep ticking them off. Thank you so much. Bye.